Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Tala Talks NICU, where we take complicated medical concepts and explain them in a way that you can understand them and retain them and use them forever. Today we are continuing with the leukocytes. Specifically today we are going to talk about different calculations that we can do with the white blood cell count that will help us predict whether a baby has sepsis or not. And if you've watched any of these so far that you'll realize that one of the things that we worry most about in the NICU is whether a baby has sepsis or not. And we very often use different parts of the white blood cells and their differentials to figure out the chance of a baby having sepsis. Before I start all of that, I just want to introduce, hopefully not introduce, but talk about the concepts of sensitivity and specificity of a test. Because I really want to emphasize that there are very few tests in medicine that aren't kind of the gold standard that are that sensitive or that specific. And nothing, even with a white blood cell count, are that sensitive or specific in predicting whether a baby has sepsis. The sensitivity of a test is the chance of that test correctly diagnosing the patients with the disease. So a highly sensitive test doesn't have a lot of false negatives. Um, screening tests are sensitive because you wanna make sure that you catch everybody with the disease. A specific test means that the test will only be positive for people with the disease. So a highly specific test does not have a lot of false positives. Um, so for example, when we started hearing about all the reports of COVID coming out of China, then we, heard that about 99% of those patients with COVID had a fever. So that would be checking for somebody's temperature, checking to see if they had a fever would be a good screening test for COVID because that is a sensitive test. It means that really we're catching 99% of the patients with COVID. Obviously now we know that there are loads of patients with COVID that didn't end up having a fever, but from what we first heard, that was a very sensitive test for catching the coronavirus. It wasn't very specific because you could have a fever for loads of other reasons, right? You could have had another cold, you could have had, you could have been walking through the Sahara Desert and you're just like got a heat stroke, you could have cancer. So it's not a specific test, but it is sensitive, or we thought it was sensitive because it was catching most of the patients with coronavirus. So just as we go through this, just understand that really none of these tests are very specific or very sensitive in amongst themselves. They come in useful when we put them all together, when we put all these tests together with the clinical picture, and then all together, they give us a very good feel about whether this baby is septic or not. So there's kind of three big parameters that we use as clues as to whether a baby is sepsis. Ultimately, cultures are the gold standard. So you get a blood culture from a baby, it's positive, that baby's septic. Generally, most of the time, if the culture is negative, then you should be able to say the baby's not septic. Sometimes we're like, well, maybe we missed it. Maybe the, that sample didn't have bacteria in it. Maybe the baby's septic anyway. But most of the time we use the culture as the gold standard. So the other three tests that we use looking at the white blood cell count is one, the number of the actual white blood cells. So whether it's very low or very high. Two, the absolute neutrophil count. And three, the I over T ratio. So let's go through all of those individually and there are gonna be examples on the screen behind me. So the first one is the total white blood cell count. So if the white blood cell count is less than 5,000 or the white blood cell count is more than 30,000, then we are more concerned about sepsis. Number two, the absolute neutrophil count. So let's uh, look at the example on the screen. This is from a CBC and a differential. So let's imagine there's a baby who's quite sick that ended up with this CBC count. So WBC count is 4.2 thousand with the differential being 21% sex, seven bands, three milos, three promylos. So those are all the myelogenous line, right? Those are the immature cells from the neutrophil line. Then 58% lymphs, not myelogenous, 5% monos, 3% eos. The way that we calculate the absolute neutrophil count is we want to calculate the number of thousands of the cells of the actual myelogenous line. So you take the total number of cells, which is 4.2 thousand, and then you multiply it by the percentage of the segs in the immature forms. In this example, the total number of the myelogenous line, so the segs plus the immature forms, is 21 plus seven plus three plus three equals 34. So 
you do 34 divided by 100, so 0.34 times 4,200, which is your WBC count, gives you an absolute neutrophil count of 1,428. That is a low absolute neutrophil count. Any time you have an absolute neutrophil count less than 1,500, you start worrying more about sepsis. Not are you just worried about sepsis, but remember the white blood cells are also responsible for fighting infection. So first of all, you're worried about why did they go down in the first place? And second of all, you're worried about the fact like what is your ability now to actually fight an infection because your, all your white blood cell count, all your little warriors are much lower in number than they should be. So the first one was the total WBC count, less than 5,000, more than 30,000. The second one was the absolute neutrophil count. And the third one, which we talk about a lot, ID folks don't really kind of believe this as much as we all do in the, in the NICU world, but the I over T ratio. Again, none of these should be used individually to decide whether a kid has sepsis or not. They're all just giving you a better idea of how scared you should be. So I over T ratio stands for immature over total. Generally, you're worried. You start worrying about the I over T ratio when it's somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3. Once it starts approaching 0.4, you really should be doing something about it, even if it's starting antibiotics or sending cultures or whatever. So let's calculate the I over T ratio in the numbers that we have. So the immature cells in the myelogenous line are the bands in this situation and the mylos and the promylos. We don't have any metamylos, we don't have any blasts in this situation, but so it's seven plus three plus three, which is 13, divided by all of your uh, myelogenous signs. So the segs plus the immature cells. So it's 13 divided by 13 plus 21. So it's 13 divided by 34 equals 0.38. So in this case, that's a pretty high I over T ratio. For me, this is a very concerning CBC. We've got a low WBC count, which is less than 5,000. In this case, it's 4,200. We have a low ANC, which is 1428, which is less than 1,500. And we have an elevated I over T ratio. Putting all of those together makes it very concerning that this kid could have sepsis and we need to be doing something about it. I hope you understood that. If you need any more explanation, then please write something below. Put in comments and suggestions. Otherwise, please like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all these fascinating NICU topics we have planned. Thank you.